Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we're back with another Walking Dead review. Today continuing season two and of course it is episode three and what a great episode this was. Predominantly on Shane's side of things but overall, you know, building towards the mid-season finale. It's been brilliant so far and just continuously working on storylines to build towards certain aspects that make this season very unique from the others. But um, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's on Disney+. Plus, As I always say, hit that subscribe button if you're yet to do so. Leave a like. And, of course, spoilers ahead. Enjoy. So, episode three of season two was huge for, you know, Shane and Otis. They were trapped at uh, the end of last episode. And the opening scene in this episode was great because it like, basically was Rick telling a story to Laurie that he's been, you know, he's told a million times about Shane. Can't remember the context of it, but just a funny story that he enjoys and remembers. And it was basically just overlapping Shane and Otis running down corridors in school. And then obviously, because that was the main premise of the episode, will they get back in time for Carl? Um, and just as, you know, Herschel was about to start on the operation whilst he was awake, after he had a seizure, um, passed out, he arrived on time, but he was by himself. And, you know, I, I when you watch this episode, you get to see Shane be a really good character and his relationship with Oates is brilliant. Every time he's trying to help him work well with him, you know, Shane thinks he's dead at one point, then Oates rocks up. And I thought it was random that Shane killed Oates. Um or left him to die, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I felt as though they had plenty of time to escape. I get, you know, shooting Otis, letting Otis go on the floor, and all the zombies would literally be on Otis because he's such a big um, target. So I guess I, I, the idea is there. But I, I still believe they could have escaped with both of them alive. But again, Shane was limping because obviously he was sort of fell out of the window due to the zombie. So he, he had leg issues. So I... Again, it put less stress on him escaping. So um, it was sort of the darker moment in Shane's story. Um, he's shaving his hair, you know, he became bold Shane or short, very short, short hair Shane. And it's the Shane we all know that is basically the villain of the series now who's going to be manipulating characters like Andrea and Laurie and Rick. Uh, and obviously Randall later down the line. But um, it was a brilliant episode, and for these nine episodes to have been built up, building up Shane's character and everything he'd been through, and him being the villain of the story, he's now just going along with it, basically. People don't respect him, things he's been through, you know, he played off the Otis thing as, you know, him actually just dying against Shane, having nothing to do with it. Uh, Patricia obviously taking it quite hard, as well as Maggie, and you get to see the early days of Glenn and Maggie as well, talking. Beth. Jimmy Bailey at Pier. Um, but I'm loving Herschel's story, his um willingness to just continuously help Carl, even with Otis's death, and keep it aside from Patricia for the time being. You know, we have T Dog, he's being um seen to as well. And then you have obviously a little bit of story, you know, Daryl, you know, he sees Carol crying, so he just wants to go out and look for Sophia continuously. And you know, I love Daryl's character because he could see in the likes of Andrew and Dale and all them that they, that they want they want to give up. But Daryl's looking at it from Carol's perspective. You know, if it was him in that situation, that he wouldn't want people to be giving up. And that's why he's just one of the greatest characters in Walking Dead. And that's why this character this why Daryl comes alive in season two. You know, he has his moments in season one, but season two is where he comes alive, you know, hunting for Sophia on a regular basis the hallucinations he has, the almost deaf, near-death experiences he's going to have. Um, and we're already halfway to the halfway point. And um, I think they've been steadily doing the episodes, been doing them very well. They're including so much content. They're not missing anything out. They're including every character. You know, the mention of Jackie in this episode, Laurie. I don't think, I don't think schizophrenia what she's being, but you know, one minute she's like, Rick, you have to be strong for your son. And the next minute she's like, we should just let him die. <laughs> like, it's, and she's just like, what's the purpose of him living? Bear in mind, he lives till um, season eight, season seven, eight. I can't remember what season he lives till. 
he has a very long lifespan, basically, multiple issues along the way, but, you know, he outlives her. So, yes, it's a birth, you know, that sort of killed her off. So, um, you know, Carl was never experienced in my life. But, yeah, Laurie is just proving why she's such a shit character. Um, and we get to see why Rick is so strong. And he becomes stronger all the way through the episode. And it's just brilliant to watch. All the characters in the show so far are brilliant. But Andrea and Laurie, I just don't like them as characters. Um, we're not getting much from Glenn or T-Dog. You know, Dale and Andrea becoming closer again after he returned the gun. Um, and t Dog still coming out with stupid comments like, oh, I don't think Daryl's my friend. It's like, I think he is. He saved you with antibiotics, you know. It's like you put, put more faith in Glenn. You know, he's the one who got you to the farm. More faith in Dale. You know, all these people are supporting him. And t Dog's just been a right dick. I used to think he was a great character, but he's just a wind ass piece of shit, you know. So you can add to the list of Andrea and Laurie. But yeah, it was a fantastic episode. It's been a great flow so far. And I'm looking forward to the next episode. And I want to see people's reaction to Shane shaving his hair. Because he just looks like a crazy person now with that hairstyle. It just fits the vibe, you know, when he was staring into the mirror with the, the way he was, he was staring into hell. But yeah, a fantastic episode. Go check um, the other episodes out, season one out, of course. If you have not done so yet, I intend to be doing these most slightly daily, but obviously every other day at least until we reach season 11, part one. All my part two reviews are on the channel, part three coming end of the year. I'm currently doing Further Walking Dead season seven, part two. So be sure to check them out as well if you're a fan of the Walking Dead universe. Until next time, hit that subscribe button, leave a like and let me know down below your thoughts on season two. Goodbye.